Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. I've got some messages from the Lord to share with you. As always, I suggest if any of them don't sit right with you, either shelve them or take them to the Father or to the Holy Spirit and ask Him to help you get confirmation, especially if it's an important prophetic something coming up kind of thing. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, these are all found in the newsletter from Dawn, which I get every day, and I don't have a link. So if anybody wants to write to Dawn, I will um, give you her email address, okay? I should probably write to her and ask her if that's okay. I don't know why it wouldn't be. It's just that she's in Hong Kong. Okay, you see what I'm saying? But I'm, I don't even know how I ever got on her list. I really don't. But anyway, let's get started. I'm, I got too much hair curling around my face. Ask Me. This is Small Straws in a Soft Wind by Marsha Burns. Ask Me. And I will give you the wisdom and strength to endure difficult circumstances. Anybody going through a difficult circumstance right now? A lot of people are. What you are experiencing is not something done in a corner or in obscurity. I see and know everything. Nothing escapes my notice. I will escort you with great care and security. Trust me. How would you like to have a security guard by your side at all times? Well, guess what? Jesus just said you do, and he's there. James 1.5 says, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. Um, yeah, it says, I will escort you with great care and security. Trust me. She probably couldn't find a scripture that directly says he's like a security guard. <laughs> If anybody can find one, please post it in the comments. Now, this one is someone who doesn't typically submit anything that I remember, may have, but I, I don't remember. The title of it is Wait on Me. And this it was received or put up February 11th, 2021. And the it must be a channel or a website someone who calls yourself until that glorious day i suspect it's a website anyway it goes like this my children take your eyes off this fallen and falling world don't fight to save the sinking ship. You are of my kingdom and your battles are spiritual. Do not lose your peace as you see all earthly systems collapsing. Yes, it is intentionally collapsing. And you must keep your eyes on me as Peter did when he first walked on the water. Remember, do not look at the fierce waves and be overcome. But remember that I have all power over wind and waves. But I will not silence this storm. This storm will grow until the collapse is complete. 
The enemy intends that you take up arms so that he can put you in prisons. He wants to rile you for an excuse to attack you. If you move apart from me, you will suffer needlessly. Be still and quiet your soul. Wait on me. Look to me. And the scripture given is Psalm 37. And this person did not write it out. So apparently they want you to look it up. And I want you to do the same. Get into your Bible and look up Psalm 37. Okay, this next one. Um, okay, I'm skipping that one. Now, this is the best message I, I think I've ever heard Kevin Robinson get. It was This was from February 12th. I've been holding on to this, wanting to share it. And uh, other things, you know, kept getting in the way. So anyway, here we go. One of the biggest struggles any committed Christian encounters is electing to walk in the spiritual instead of the carnal. That's why people have problems. Okay, let me continue. The carnal or natural is the easy way to traverse and requires little effort. Traverse is moving about, doing your daily thing, going from here to there. You know what I'm saying? What we do in the natural, you know, moving about, traversing. Okay. The spiritual, on the other hand, is a choice you have to make daily. It is a moment-by-moment -moment walk which takes a conscious effort. Train your heart to walk by my spirit willingly. I am not, oh, I'm sorry, I will not govern your willpower, but you can. See, the Lord, the Lord is not going to make anybody mind <laughs> like you know, you make your children mind. He doesn't make us mind. He doesn't make us not sin. We have to do it ourselves. We have to choose to live in the spiritual. You know, it's been said that the spiritual world is really more real than this physical because this physical is all going to go away and we're going to end up in the spiritual, what we call the spiritual now, what we cannot see, you're either going to go to heaven or you're going to go to hell. And you can't think of it as God would not send uh, people who know him or been going to church all their life to hell. Really? Do you love him with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength? Do you love your neighbor as yourself? Do you do kind things for people who need help? Do you give generously if you're able? I mean, there's so many things. Do you sin and not repent? Or do you repent every night of whatever you can think of? Do you watch your language? Or do you think it doesn't matter what you say out of your mouth? There's lots more there. It's in the Bible. Okay? That determines whether you go to heaven or whether you go to hell. And that's why you cannot have that attitude of once saved, always saved. Once you've given your heart to the Lord and get baptized, you're saved. Praise the Lord, I got my ticket to heaven. Hallelujah. And you may actually live right for a while, but if you're not taught to repent and stay in communion with the Lord on a day-to-day -day basis, 
and you're not taught that you, when you accepted Jesus as your Savior, you made a commitment to love him as he made a commitment to you by dying on that cross. That was no easy task. That was the Son of God leaving his heavenly estate and coming down here to this evil world and I'm sure it wasn't easy to live when he came. He had to come then when crucifixion was the worst way a man could die. The slowest death. Every other way is quicker. Hanging, shooting, being stuck through with a sword. Those ways you die quick. No, he chose that way. Or he had it arranged, had Satan... How can I say this? He wouldn't have Satan do anything. See, he needed to come right then because there were 4,000 years before he came and then there had to be 2,000 years of the church age, which is up. It, I mean, he came around 3 B.C. And this is 2021. So what do y'all think? This 2,000 years is up. But did it start at 3 BC? Were there a full 4,000 years up to that point? They, they say, I read somewhere that the Bible starts in like 30 some BC. Well, what happened to the first 30 years? Maybe it just didn't get recorded. I don't know. We'll find out when we get to heaven. I'll read the scripture that went with Kevin's prophecy that he got. Let's see. Or, well, it's a message from the Lord, and I believe it because it, it's 100% it's right on how we're supposed to live. Galatians 5.16 and AMPC. It's probably amplified something. I don't know. But I say, walk and live, brackets, habitually, close brackets, in the bracket, holy, unbracket, spirit. So, but I say, walk and live habitually in the Holy Spirit, Responsive to and controlled and guided by the Spirit. Okay, that's weird. There's a bracket after Spirit. Maybe it was a typo. Then you will certainly not gratify the cravings and desires of the flesh. Parentheses of human nature without God closed parentheses and that again was given to Kevin Robinson now this last one is so right on to same date February 12th there are so many distractions right now everything and everyone is vying for your attention well maybe not so much uh, you depends on who you are I guess they might this might have been specifically for Robin, but she thought, well, other people probably have this problem too, so I'll go ahead and share it. You know, that happens. All right, steal away with me for a time. That's Jesus speaking. I want to speak to you and show you of things to come. Politics is noisy. The airways are noisy. Even the weather is dominating your attention. And this was back on the 12th. Well, people were already expecting it and looking, you know, preparing for it, going out to get wood and kerosene and food supplies they didn't have to cook and, you know, extra blankets maybe, I don't know. All right, so yeah, the weather is dominating your attention. These things pass away and change in an instant. Don't they, though? Power comes on. It's 
Hallelujah, the power's on. Now we're warm again. We can cook and don't have to worry about all that other. But I never see. These things pass away and change in an instant, but I never do. I want to be your constant companion. Let's let him be, okay? I like that. Constant companion. And the scripture that Robin found to go with this or was given, she may have prayed. I don't, you know, I, I don't know if they come up with them or does the Holy Spirit lay them on their heart. I don't know. It's from the TLB, which I didn't know what that one was either, so I looked that one up. It's the Living Bible. I had one of those. And it says here, the Living Bible is a personal paraphrase, not a translation of the Bible in English by Kenneth N. Taylor. Taylor used the American Standard Version of 1901, which I didn't know that was that old, as his base text. So, that's what the Living Bible is. Okay, that was the first Bible I ever had. My brother gave it to me because he got a new one. Okay, so where was I? And that, let's see. Ask me and I will tell you some remarkable secrets about what is going to happen here. And that was given to Robin Robinson Bolin. Okay, so that's the end of that one. I plead the blood of Jesus over this video and hope it goes up and stays up. And I plead the blood of Jesus over each and every one of us and our devices and all of our internet connections. And if yours is out and you don't even hear this, then I pray that yours is restored ASAP according to Father's will. In Jesus' name I pray that right now. Amen and amen. Bye for now. I will talk to you later.